Hey guys, this is Stephen Howard and my dog Yucca. She's been running around in the snow today and I've been shoveling snow from the driveway. It looks like we got about three or four inches yesterday. Uh, anyway, I'm just kind of here this morning. Uh, it's Sunday morning and um, I've been taking a real inventory um a lot of people call it a midlife crisis or whatever um yeah it might be your midlife i'm i'm 48 years old i hope i don't know i'm not very good at math um i think i'll probably end up living till i'm about maybe 80 or 92 you know so 48 i got a good 30 35 years left if I don't get hit by a car or uh, some sort of accident doing something that I think I'm young enough to do still. Um, I think the important thing is to live your life to the fullest, to um, to not hold back. You know, if, if you still feel that you're physically able to do something, I mean... A guy that passed on a few years ago was, a, I think, an 82-year-old skateboarder. And um, I, lo I loved his image. Um, you know, just the old caveman style, big beard, long hair. And, um, you know, he loved the kids. He loved to impress the kids. And then some sponsors saw it, and they were like, yeah, it's perfect for marketing for our company. So... Um, you know, there was a guy in Venice beach, uh, a mystic and he had a big cloak and uh, my parents were pretty wild. They let me like go and experience what, whatever. And, um, I would end up talking to all kinds of people cause I was just a social kid and a Sagittarius. So, um, this guy, old guy in a cloak in Venice Beach, walked up and he gave me a little pin charm of an angel. And he said, uh, you know, it was his way to get 20 bucks off my parents or whatever. And I didn't realize it, but I, I talked to him. and But he said something to me that was really interesting. He said, um, he said Steve, you're always going to make money off of your face. And my parents were like, well, what do you mean? He's like, uh, kid's an angel. He's going to make money off of his face. Well, I've been chasing it for a while, but I have had, you know, quite a few experiences. So I was a model in New York for a while. Um, later in my life, I got a, a modeling job in Las Vegas, and I ended up with a billboard on the 15 freeway. Now, like he said, you know, I didn't make a gajillion dollars off of my face, um, but I've always believed in myself, um, I guess, as a result of what he said to me. So, um, you know, if he was talking to anyone else, it, it would be either, you know, your face or your, um, you know, maybe there would be another key, but for me... It was, it was my face and it kind of makes sense to me. Um, people are attracted to you by your meat suit, you know, like what you look like. And, um, it's really unfortunate because the soul underneath and the personality within are probably way different than the external image of what you look like really is. Like, say you have a lot of tattoos, well, that doesn't mean you went to prison. Um, let's say you don't have any tattoos, and you drive a certain type of car, and you carry yourself, and you maintain yourself really well, you, you clean your teeth really well, and um, you don't smoke or do anything bad. Um, there's a certain sort of image that people see from that. They're attracted to that. Um, wow, really clean, really cool. Um, so 
for me as a light worker, I'm beginning to realize that what your exterior looks like really has nothing to do with I mean, it, it, it's good in relationships to be physically attracted and to have that chemistry or, you know, excitement because of what you're, you're visually seeing. Men are very, very visual. Uh, ask a few of my friends on Facebook, Jesus. So, um, but, you know, it, it doesn't matter if you're, if you're overweight. It doesn't matter if you're... Um, what society would class as not that good looking. Um, I think it's really awful the way society, if you're good looking, you get rewarded. If you're, if you're not, you don't. And I don't think that is a really good way to be going about our, our day to day lives. I believe that if we're all looked upon as like snowflakes, like beautiful beings that were brought here for a purpose, then you start to look at everybody a lot differently. And um, so your inner beauty is, is more attractive. The ring in your, in your voice, the the way you i don't know the, the the way you exude your your soul out into the world on other people the way you treat other people that is really beautiful to me so um i'm just kind of taking a deep inventory of myself because you know what do i in my midlife or whatever you want to call it what do I want to do for the next, you know, 20 years, 30 years? What's the goal? Um, what is society's idea of a goal? Um, you know, my, my boss gloats, my boss here at the construction site, he gloats because he was, he was in Las Vegas and he started a software company. And his friend said, if we don't sell the company within six months, it'll be obsolete. And he goes, okay, put it up for sale. And they ended up selling it for like, I don't know, $11 million or something. And he's, you know, he's got a nice Ford truck. He bought a $300,000 property, put his trailer on it. Uh, I live here and kind of help him remodel the place. He's put about 85 grand in it. And when it hits the market, it's going to sell for 333. So he'll make a hundred thousand dollars in like a 90 day period. So, and he's already got money. So, um, you know, I make 12 bucks an hour, sometimes 20 bucks an hour. I live in a trailer with my dog. Um, I don't work enough and I've just been kind of realizing at 48 years old, am I ever going to really make it to where I want to be or where society wants me to be uh, in a short amount of time? Well, maybe if that dude's right and somebody sees... Um, I'll get an opportunity that's a lot better than what I've been dealing with. Um, I used to be the head of a marijuana laboratory uh, when the when the robbery happened, so I had to take executive leave, which was basically I'm fired. And then the company was sold off, I think, uh, later on. But um, I've had some peaks, you know. I was a nightclub promoter in Las Vegas, and... Uh, if you ever want to check me out, I'm in the first 17 seconds of a New Kids on the Block video featuring Neo, uh, single. It was filmed at the Jet Nightclub where I worked. Um, I've seen opportunity. I've been in opportunity. I've made a lot of money. I've been to Hawaii many times for 10-day periods and um, once almost for 30 days. 
Uh, I know what it's like to make $10,000 a month, you know? So to live how I live now, I think is like a real good lesson. It's a good lesson. It teaches you how to live on pretty much nothing for a long period of time. So when you do have abundance, when it does come back again, and you are in a good place, and things are going right, how you want them to go, uh, you'll appreciate them more. I think that goes for relationships too. You know, there's something to be said about abstinence or being by yourself. And then when you do have somebody in your life, I think you'll appreciate them a lot more and treat them a lot better overall. Not that I treat anybody poorly. But um, I've had my fair share of lessons in the midlife. I just wanted to put it out there to you guys today. And uh, yeah, smoke them if you got them. Have a good day.